Hey, Loopline here. In this video, I want to go over the Automator plugin. So I did an old video back like three years ago in 2013 or something uh, about Automator, and it was version one at that point, and I realized I haven't done anything for version two and had some people asking questions, so here we are. So if you don't have the Automator plugin, it's a fantastic plugin. You can get it by going to Premium Plugins, Show Available Plugins, and then the Automator. Um, once you purchase it, you can purchase it through here. I think there's a link on the website on scrapebox.com as well. Once you purchase it, you'll get an email from receipt from PayPal saying, hey, thanks for the purchase. It does take up to 12 hours to get it activated because they do manually activate all licensed stuff, including the plugins. Um, but then once it's activated, you just come right back in here to the Show Available Plugins menu under Premium Plugins here. Click on the Automator, install it, or if you already have it and you just need to update it, you can do that, that sort of thing. Once it's installed, you launch it from the same spot up here. Now, to build Automator project files, we launch the Automator from the Premium Plugins menu here. And then to use Automator project files, we use it over here. So we'll talk about both briefly here. Automator plugin, we're going to launch it. Um, it comes up and you'll see the little green icon that shows up down here. So basically, this is all the stuff it can do down the side. And a quick note, since we're talking about subjects, we can do proxies, keywords, harvester, poster, trackbacks, ping, miscellaneous, and add-ons. The add-ons will only show up here based on what you have installed. So if you have no add-ons installed, no add-ons will show up here. Also, if you build a automator project file on one instance of Scrapebox and say I have all the add-ons installed here and so I build it here and I build it with this one but I go over here to run it with this one because you can have more than one instance of Scrapebox running in fact you can have an unlimited number of instances on the given machine you have a license for and if you don't know how to do that I have another video on the same channel about how to do that but say I go to run it over here and I don't have the add-ons installed over here it's not going to work right if I'm using add-ons so you want to make sure that whatever add-ons you use in the automator one they've got to be installed so you can build the project file and they also have to be installed on whatever instance of Scrapebox you're running that automator file on so that said, let's look at the various features here. Under proxies, pretty awesome. You can do a lot of things. You can enable and disable proxies. You can harvest proxies um, from the actual sources as well as sources that you add yourself. You can test proxies, load proxies, save proxies, and then you can remove duplicates, remove all user proxy sources, and then add harvested URLs as proxy sources. A lot of great stuff you can do with proxies. Then we can just get rid of these things. I'm just going to right click and delete them. Um, and then you can delete all commands there you see as well and then we can go here to keywords basic we can scrape keywords import keywords and then various keyword filter functions that sort of thing for managing our keywords and when we get to harvester we have a lot of options we can harvest urls using the custom footprint or uh, the platforms included with Scrapebox and even use the detailed harvester. We can go through here and pick our engines and proxy, our, uh, platforms and that sort of thing. And we've got a lot of options here. We can add timestamps and numbers and overwrite files. And um, this is way upgraded from version one. You can do a lot more things in the harvester section. A lot of filters, removing duplicates, removing URLs, containing, not containing. Um, this one is a little bit more unique because it's two functions in one. I can either remove URLs containing or not containing by checking this box and select a file um, or I can just input them here so those are those functions there that are kind of newer um, remove with a number of characters trimming to root and folder randomizing clearing importing exporting and splitting and that sort of thing and really the only other thing here is that probably it's important to note if you're going to export URLs the default export format in Scrapebox version 2 is going to be set to uh, Unicode which is great for Scrapebox, but if you're going to use these files in something else that doesn't support Unicode, you can go here to Options and set the default export to ANSI, but that may not necessarily apply um, if you don't do that, I mean, and you come over here in the Automator, you can go ahead and check this box to save the URL as an encoded ANSI file, so might save you some headache there. Um, and we can go under the poster, uh, generate some names and emails, and then post content. Pretty awesome. You can build links. That's fast poster there. Uh, trackbacks is pretty basic. We're sending trackbacks. We're talking about fast poster here and trackbacks here with this. Ping. Uh, we can ping websites. 
using, you know, we're then we're now talking about the ping function here, and then miscellaneous, um, check page rank. This will probably be removed because Google has removed page rank. It doesn't work anymore. So Scrapebox already removed it up here, but it just hasn't removed it here because it hasn't gotten an update since that happened. But I'm sure that'll be gone. It may even be replaced with some other thing to do with checking metrics from whatever the latest and greatest is. But um, we can check links. That's the link checker here for just checking to see our links. We can do a delay. So delay can be handy. You can delay it up to a day. Um, you can put in your own seconds here. So maybe you want to loop something every 24 hours or even once a week or um, you know whatever. Delays are pretty handy there. Send notification email, kind of cool. Um, if you want to get that, you do have to go to options here and set that uh, email sending up. But once you get that done, it can send you an email when something is done. Pretty awesome. So let the automator run and get an email when it's done and you can go to the server and check it out. Loop, pretty awesome as well. I use that a lot so you can continuously loop things or for X number of times. Grabbing emails and grabbing links and then grabbing phone numbers. We can shut down Scrapebox. We can external execute an external program. Um, I use this a lot as well. It does support batch files right out of the gate, which are handy. Um, and then you can actually use exe files as well as a parameter. Uh, we can do domain lookup. So if we want to check for like unregistered domain names, we can do that. We can do add-ons. It has the vast majority of all of the add-ons that Scrapebox supports. It doesn't have a few of them, like it doesn't have the music player, um, and it doesn't have a couple of them that doesn't really apply, but most of them are here, which can be really handy to utilize these to do things. And then, um, of course, this stuff here is create a new file, load, save, append, that sort of thing. Really cool tool here. You can rearrange them now just by dragging them, um, which is a lot easier than it was in version one when you had to like roll everything up one at a time. And then there's some information here and here and that sort of thing. So a lot of updates in the version two automator, a lot more things you can do. Um, hopefully that opens your eyes a little bit. If you watch some of the later videos that I have in Scrapebox version two, when I see an opportunity for something that I see people do or that I do in the automator, I try to talk about it in the videos. So if you've if it's been a while since you watched some of the videos on a certain function and I have a new video on that function, you might want to watch that because you might get some good ideas on how you can do different things. And also don't forget about things like Dropbox and other file sharing services. I have tons of servers that are run Scrapebox and they all dump files in Dropbox and work together because I can't put a thousand instances of Scrapebox on one server. So all my servers work together by sharing files with, with custom scripts that I execute here and then the Scrapebox automation and it's all there and it's all synced together. So Scrapebox Automator is an invaluable tool for me. I know a lot of other users find great value in it being able to automate which is what Scrapebox is about anyways now we can automate the automator so fantastic tool and that's how the Scrapebox version 2 automator works thanks for watching this Scrapebox video for more Scrapebox videos click the subscribe button on your screen or click the subscribe button down below